What is up, mortals? It is Taro in here with a new video for you. Welcome to Season 1, Part 2 of What If Deku Was an Osmosian. I just wanted to greet you guys by saying sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. So we begin. Izuku guided Melissa through the thoroughfares of Kiyashi Ward Shopping Mall to a nice restaurant. The two ordered and found seats at a table outside. Melissa then looked at the green-eyed youth with sympathy in her eyes. So, tell me about you and the mean boy. Izuku took a deep breath and began the story. He explained how both he and Bakugo had been friends when they were small, how Bakugo had become conceited when his quirk explosion activated, how the bomb lad had taken it as a personal assault on his honor that Izuku's quirk, armor body, had been just as powerful as his. Melissa listened as her friend told the whole backstory. She could think of only one thing to say when she finally spoke. He sounds like a real jerk. He is, but he's not all talk. He's one of the most skilled at using his quirk in our school. You're better. How can you say that? You've never seen him use his power before. I've seen how hard you work to make yourself better. I also know that you want to be a hero as much as I do. True, but Bakugo is a way better combatant than I am. Maybe, but you have something he doesn't. And what would that be? You care. You want to be a hero to help people, not to prove yourself. I think that makes you more of a hero than Bakugo is. Really? Melissa nodded enthusiastically. Man, this conversation got serious really fast. How about we cut that out and just have fun? Sounds good. As the pair finished their lunch, they turned their conversation towards getting to know each other better. Melissa learned that Midoriya was a real All Might fanboy. She would have to see if she could introduce them at some point. Izuku learned that Melissa was the daughter of David Shield, the famous inventor. This sent the boy into an enthusiastic fanboy rant. Melissa could only laugh at the boy's enthusiasm. She had never met someone as into heroes as Izuku. After lunch, the two wandered around the mall for a few hours. Melissa bought several items during that time. She had two very large bags in her hands by the end of the day. Did you really need to buy all that stuff, Melissa? Yeah, as you know, I arrived in Japan a few months ago. In that time, I have been training for the UA entrance exams nearly nonstop. I'm out of almost everything at this point. I guess that makes sense. The two exited the mall and were standing at a nearby bus stop. So, what direction are you heading? Oh, my place is to the east of here. I'm heading the same way. How about I walk you home? How chivalrous of you. I would love for you to walk me home. The two climbed on a bus. After a few minutes, they were in the neighborhood where Melissa's apartment was. Little did they know they were being followed. Both Izuku and Melissa walked down an abandoned street. A sinister figure slithered through the storm drains with his eyes on Izuku. The figure thought to himself, He looks like a big, strong suit. If I wear him, then I could take on that muscle-bound idiot chasing me. At that point, the figure exploded out of the storm drains. He was a villain made of a toxic green slime. He rushed forward and wrapped his slimy body around Izuku. Melissa became alarmed at this sight and rushed to help Izuku. She tried to pull the slime man off of Izuku, but her fingers just slipped through to goo. The villain smacked Melissa across the face with his massive, oozy hand. The force of the blow sent the girl flying backwards. Her shopping bags flew off her arms and landed on the ground with a loud crash. My body is made of fluid. I'm going to take your boyfriend here and use him as a meat suit. So you better cooperate, or I will get violent. Izuku tried to rip the villain off his body, but it was no use. His fingers slipped through the jerk's fluid body. He also couldn't reach the substance marvels in his pocket to activate his power. The villain forced his body down Izuku's throat. The boy knew if this continued, he would probably die. Melissa got to her feet. The villain's strike had left a bright red mark on her face. The girl paid it no mind. Her mind was more concerned about Izuku. She knew he was in trouble by the look on his face. She had to do something. Melissa reached into her pocket. She pulled out a pair of red bracelets. She thought to herself, Looks like I'll get to test these earlier than I expected. The determined girl slapped the bracelets onto her wrists. She then pressed a button on each one, and they expanded into a pair of gauntlets. Each one covered her arms from knuckles to elbow in a winding red pattern. 
Only her fingers were left exposed. Melissa activated her power. An aura of red lightning surrounded her body. She then focused her power into her right arm. Melissa pulled back her arm like she was going to execute a punch. The villain wondered what she was doing. The villain laughed to himself. He thought, foolish girl. What does she think she's going to hit from all the way over there? She has lost her mind. Izuku looked out of the corner of his eye at Melissa. He could hear the villain laugh as he suffocated him. However, he saw an aura of energy glowing around his friend. He figured this had to be her quirk. Melissa thought to herself, I had better use the max. The energy of her quirk flowed into her arms. She then unleashed a powerful blow. The punch caused a wave of air pressure to wash over Izuku and the villain. The villain tried his hardest to hold together, but the force of the wind was too much. The villain's body was broken apart from the blow, and the pieces splattered against nearby walls and trees. Melissa ran over to her friend to check on him. Are you all right, Midoriya? Izuku coughed up several more pieces of the slime villain. The green team then spoke through labored breathing. That was disgusting. Thanks, Melissa. I will be all right. I'm glad. Izuku inhaled dramatically. He then spoke in a shaky voice. We need to gather the villain up and hand him off to a hero or the cops. Someone is probably looking for him. Good idea. Do you have anything that can hold something like that? I can handle it. Izuku reached into his pocket and pulled out a small leather bag. He opened the bag and pulled out a ball bearing. He then placed the bag back into his pants pocket. Gripping the bearing tightly, he activated his power. His arm transformed into a shiny stainless steel. That is cool, but how is it going to hold a villain? Like this. Izuku then held up his empty hand. The metal shifted from his arm into his open palm. The metal took on the shape of a large bottle and a twist top. Melissa's eyes went wide in amazement. That is so cool! I didn't realize you could reshape the metal also. I had the idea a while back. It took me almost a month to get the hang of it, and I can still only make simple shapes. It's still cool. Melissa looked around and saw that the pieces of the villain were moving. We'd better save the praise for later. The two went to work. It took them almost 15 minutes to scoop the villain pieces into the bottle. Izuku screwed the lid shut tight. Just then, a nearby sewer grate popped off and flew through the air. A massive figure leapt onto the street and landed in a dramatic pose. Have no fear, because I am here. It was All Might, the number one hero. He looked around to see that the villain he was in pursuit of was nowhere to be seen. The only thing he saw was two familiar teenagers. Melissa was shocked to see her uncle there, but she quickly regained her composure. Fortunately, Izuku was too busy fanboying out to notice his friend's shock. Melissa, <clears throat> I mean, hello, citizens. Have you seen a large goo villain around? It's all right. This is so amazing. Melissa stifled a giggle. She had hoped to arrange a meeting, but this would have to do. Midoriya, the villain? Oh, right. Izuku handed the metal container to the number one hero. The villain is in here. All Might took the bottle from the green team. You captured this guy by yourself? Well, I made the bottle. Melissa was the one who knocked out the villain. We, we both then gathered him into that bottle. A team effort, then. Normally, it would be against the law to use your quirks in public. However, since you were defending yourselves, I will not get mad. You did good work. Really, All Might? Of course. I think you two could make great heroes one day. Thank you, sir. We plan on going out for UA soon. Well, I wish you both the best of luck. Just don't let this success go to your head. You still have a long way to go before you are true heroes. But you two do show great promise. Both teens thanked the large man. He then leapt away to deliver the villain to the police. Izuku had a huge smile on his face. Melissa was happy that he got to meet his idol. The two teens then started walking towards Melissa's place once again. As they walked, the two discussed the events that just played out. Well, that was unexpected. It was, and you were amazing, Melissa. Your quirk is so strong. What were those devices on your arms? Oh, these? 
They're my support devices my dad built for me. They allow me to use 30% of my power without breaking myself. Breaking yourself? Oh, right. You said that your quirk generates so much force that your body can't take it and your bones break. All true. But I had the idea for these items, and my dad built them for me. I knew I would need to use a higher percentage of my power to get into UA, but it would do no good if I had to break my limbs to do it. Smart. I feel the same way. That is why I spent my time training to use less material for my transformation. I was wondering about that. You used a small ball bearing to cover your arms. Yeah, I still need a large amount of material to transform my entire body at this point. However, I figured I could not always count on having a usable material around. I mean, what if I'm in a forest against a guy with fire powers? Looks like I'm not the only smart one here. Both teens blushed mildly at the compliments. The two had been so engrossed in their conversation that they hadn't realized how far they had come. They were standing right outside of Melissa's apartment building. Izuku walked Melissa to her front door. When they arrived, a box was sitting on the doormat. Looks like you have a package. Actually, it's for you, Midoriya. But it has your name on it. Melissa bent down and picked up the box. She opened the box to reveal an item that looked like a charm bracelet. What is that? It's a support item for you. Really? Yeah. When I first saw you use your power, I thought it would be bad if you were caught in a situation where you had no materials on hand. So I talked with my dad, and he came up with this. She handed the bracelet to Izuku. Now that the green teen had it in his hands, he could see that it looked more like a flattened chain. Each link of the chain was made of a different material. Some links were made from material he knew. One was made from steel, another from rubber. Some were made of alloys he didn't recognize. This is really nice, but is it okay for me to have it? I mean, it looks really expensive. Of course it's okay. I had it made for you. This should be easier for you to use than that bag in your pocket. That way the material is always at hand. Izuku smiled at Melissa. The boy slipped his hand through the loop and it adjusted to a comfortable but tight fit. But part of his mind started to freak out that a girl had just given him a gift. Thank you so much, Melissa. I will put it to good use. I know you will. The two said good evening to each other. Melissa went into her apartment and Izuku went home. On his way, Izuku thought to himself, I had a really nice time today. The rest of the week came and went. Izuku stood outside of the UA campus. He had come to take the entrance exams. Izuku stood before the main gate of UA, his body shaking with excitement and fear. I can't believe I'm here. This is the school that produced All Might and so many other pro heroes. Get out of my way, miserable Deku. A gruff voice spoke from behind Izuku. The overwhelmed teen didn't have to look to see who the voice belonged to. He knew it belonged to Bakugo. Without waiting for him to move, Bakugo walked right past him and into the building. Looks like his manners have not improved. Izuku looked to his left and saw the smiling face of his friend Melissa. Melissa, I'm so glad to see you. Are you ready for the exams? Yeah, but I am a little nervous. Good to know I'm not the only one. Let's do our best to crush this test. I feel the same way. The pair entered UA and the exams began. First came the written test. It was hard, but Izuku felt that he had scored well, probably 92 to 95. Next came the practical exam. This was the one that Izuku had been the most afraid of. He wondered what they would have him doing. The Greena and Blonde entered into a large auditorium. Rows of raised seats covered one part of the room, while a stage with a big screen stood on the other half. Izuku and Melissa sat next to each other. Everyone was on the edge of their seats, waiting to find out what the next test would involve. A loud, booming voice filled the room. Good afternoon, and welcome to the next phase of the exam. A spotlight hit the stage, revealing a tall, blonde man dressed like a rock star. Midoriya started to fanboy out. He examined the man as the voice hero present Mike. Melissa giggled at her friend's enthusiasm. The man explained how the test would work. Today, each of you will face our robotic villains. They are ranked from one to three based on their level of difficulty. 
Your job will be to use your quirks to defeat as many robots as you can before time is up. A stern voice echoed through the room. Excuse me, sir. A question. A spotlight illuminated a tall boy with glasses and blue hair. Hit me. You mentioned three villains, but the handout listed four. This is not an oversight we, as elite students, can accept from the number one hero course in Japan. The boy then turned dramatically to face the rose behind him. And you, with the unkempt hair. Stop your mumbling. You are disturbing the rest of us. Present Mike then explained that the fourth villain is worth zero points. They could fight it, but there was really no point. The zero pointer was more of an obstacle they put in their way. The best plan was to avoid it and go after the robots with point values. The kids all filed out of the room and headed to their pre-assigned test sites. Izuku and Melissa were excited to find out that they had the same testing site. The two stood outside an arena that looked like a real city. Izuku wondered how a school could afford to pay to build something like that. Izuku turned to his friend. He noticed she was wearing her red gauntlets, or as she called them, full gauntlets, on her arms. She was also sporting a similar pair of items on her legs. Izuku figured they were to keep her legs from breaking. Good luck, Melissa. You too, Midoriya. The door to the site opened, and Izuku and Melissa took off running, leaving the others in the dust. Present Mike then appeared over the entrance to the test site. Go, go, go! There is no starting signal in a real battle! With that, the other test takers took off in mass. The practical portion of the entrance exam was on. Both Izuku and Melissa raced through the streets of the site. Each one managed to get about ten points apiece before they ran into anyone. However, the two stayed on task. Meanwhile, in a dark control room, All Might and Nezu sat watching the events of the test unfolding on several screens. Each screen showed a different testing site. All the examinees were hard at it. Nezu looked at one screen with interest. Is she the one you were telling me about, All Might? Yes, she is. I'm glad to see that she is doing so well. All Might's eyes looked at another screen as he said that. This one showed Izuku Midoriya. Nezu followed the blonde man's gaze. Looks like that young man is doing very well. Is he of some special interest? I have met the boy before. I thought he had a lot of promise. Looks like you are right. He is performing very well. In fact, all of the top scorers are. This looks like it will be a great year already. We both know the test isn't over yet. True. Let's see how they handle the true test. Nezu made a gesture with his hand. A man at the controls hit a big red button. The mouse man smiled at this action. Back on the testing field, Izuku ran through the alleys and streets of the testing field. Izuku used the support item Melissa gave. He decided to call it the Source Chain to transform his arms and attack any robot he came across. Several times he came to other examinees' rescue. Altogether, it was going very well. As the green teen exited the back streets and emerged onto the main street, Izuku figured he was in good shape to pass. Midoriya! Izuku turned and was met by the sight of Melissa. She came running up to the boy at an increased rate of speed. Melissa, how did it go for you? I got 65 points! Great, I got 64 myself. That should allow us to pass. We don't have much time left. At those words, the ground rumbled. In addition, the creaking and grinding of gears could be heard throughout the fake city. That can't be good. It isn't. Look! Very close to the teen's location, a mountain of metal rose from the ground. It was the zero pointer that President Mike had warned them about. We should run, Melissa. That thing is way bigger than I thought it would be. You're right. We do not want to fight that thing. Many kids ran past the pair. They were about to join the mass exodus when Izuku and Melissa heard something. A panicked female voice. Help me! My ankle is trapped! Izuku and Melissa saw that a girl with short brown hair was trapped under some rubble. What made this concerning was the fact that the zero pointer was heading straight for her. The two teens stared at each other with concerned looks. Melissa was the first to speak. We have to help her. I'm in. I will deal with the robot. You get the girl clear. You got it. Izuku ran towards the rubble pile and the trapped girl. Stay calm. I will get you out. The girl nodded at him with a pained expression. Izuku saw that the pile was made of lots of smaller pieces of rubble that had trapped the girl's ankle in place. 
The problem was several large steel beams were laying on top of the pile. If the greenette moved the rubble, then the beams would crush them both. Izuku knew what he had to do. The green teen leapt onto the top of the pile. He then placed his hand onto the steel beams and transformed his body into living steel. He had done this a few times in training, but it required a large amount of the source material to perform it. Fortunately, there was plenty here. Izuku used the enhanced strength that his metal form brought to remove the beams from the pile. Izuku leapt down and freed the girl's ankle from the rubble. The girl tried to stand, but could not put any weight on her ankle. She thought it was broken. Without thinking, Izuku picked the girl up in his arms and ran to get clear of the robot. Meanwhile, Melissa focused her power into her legs. The powerful aura of red lightning flared around her. She thought to herself, This is going to break my right gauntlet and leg braces, but I have no choice. Melissa bent down and jumped with all of her might. The pavement cracked from the force and her red spiral leg braces shattered from the impact. As she flew through the air, the determined girl redirected her power from her legs to her right arm. As she approached the robot's massive head, she pulled back her fist and yelled at the top of her lungs. Smash! The force of the blow caved in the robot's head and sent it flying backwards and collapsing with a crash. Melissa was amazed at what she had done. Then she realized she was falling towards the pavement. She thought about using her remaining gauntlet to unleash another powerful pressure wave to break her fall. She had not practiced this and was afraid of what would happen. Before Melissa could act, she felt a powerful slap across her face. Suddenly, the frightened girl found she was floating in the air. She looked around her and found that the girl they were rescuing was hovering on a piece of dismembered robot. She must have been the one that slapped her. Just then, Izuku transformed his body into rubber. He bounced up and wrapped Melissa in his stretchy arms. The girl, whose name was Ochaka Uraraka, pressed her fingertips together, and the two teens started to fall. Izuku landed with Melissa in his arms. His rubberized body absorbed the impact of the fall. Thank you, Midoriya. That was close. Izuku sat Melissa back on her feet. No problem. You should really thank Uraraka. It was all thanks to her gravity quirk. You're right. Where is she? Izuku pointed over to the side of the street where Uraraka was puking rainbows. At this point, President Mike's voice boomed through the field. That is the end of the test. For those who can, make your way to the exits. If you can't, don't worry. We will be providing rad medical treatment. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in all this information thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. If you're in the mood for some great storytelling, We the Celestials has you covered. Our We the Celestials, My Hero Academia, and Naruto What If channels retell the story of their namesake anime with a twist. Check it out if you're interested. Now, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in today's excellent content production. Their details can be found in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, I'd like to extend an invitation to join the team. The only caveat is that we only accept members from 16 years old to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interests by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. We're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video. So thank you all for watching and have a great day.